Hey guys, welcome back. It's me, Anna. I am finally sitting down to do this Q&A and I need to do it quickly because my daughter's sleeping. I don't know when she's going to wake up, but I thought maybe since I got my hair done recently, I can do that. Uh, so I'm looking somewhat decent because otherwise no makeup. Um, I'm in my comfy clothes. Got my favorite bath sweatshirt on that I finally fit into again. So if you see me looking down, I am uh, referring to questions in my Hobonichi. I am going to just kind of grab questions. I'm going to preface this that if I mention stationary minimal minimalism, that is going to be a separate video because I feel like that needs a dedicated one. Lots of changes there. Um, and I know lots of people have been asking specifically about that, where I'm at, the progress, all of that. So there, I might be skipping through some questions. So if you did ask about that or it's related to that, uh, just know that will go into that video. So I am going to jump right into it. Um, let's see. Alice asks, am I keeping a bullet journal for 2019? Yes and no. I am doing the system in my Hobonichi Weeks Mega, which I have right here. I did a video about my 2019 lineup. In case you haven't seen that, I will link that down below. I'm utilizing the same system in this planner, only I'm, instead of drawing everything out, I have it all predated here, which is what I wanted as a new mama. Did I finish December daily? Yes, I did. I made a trace paper insert, same thing that I did last year because I love the material. I love writing on trace paper, but at the time I was pregnant, so I was keeping a pregnancy journal, I was keeping my regular journal, and I was keeping a December daily. I don't feel like it worked out this year, mostly because it, the information that I was journaling seemed repetitive. It was the same thing in all three. This year, I feel like it'll be different, mostly because what I'll do is I will curate that information into my daughter's journal that I'm keeping for her now that she's born. And my December daily, I will actually, or I plan to incorporate into my regular journal. So it won't be a separate one. I did make the trace paper insert for this past year, 2018, large enough that there are enough pages to do a December daily in it separate if I wanted to keep a separate one so I don't know if I will do that um this year I do think I will incorporate it into my regular journal but I will have that trace paper like the remaining section of that trace paper insert for maybe another year or something so that's what I have planned for December daily and what I did for last year 2018 do I have many blank notebooks left? I feel like that will be in the stationary minimalism video. I actually have not counted. I know I did reduce it at least by half because I've donated more since my move. I've sold a few packs of field notes that were unopened and unused and I wasn't planning on using and I did use up a few for other things like I took them to work to use for notes and meeting things and I think there were a couple that I used for just creative writing or something so it's definitely reduced by half at least but I don't have the exact number right now. Pink Footed Gull, I love that name by the way, asks am I still using my stash? Yes. Um, more details to come about that. And she also asks, how much have I used versus what have I accumulated? I can address that here. I have not been doing that much shopping stationary wise. With the move, with, the pa with having a baby, we, you know, our budget changed. I just really wasn't focused on buying too much. I think since my move, I have put one AliExpress order. I did put in a recent AliExpress order, but it's very small. And then uh, my brother went to Japan 
recently, so I did give him some money to bring a few things back. That's pretty much it. I didn't do too much shopping. This year, I don't even have much of a stationary wish list. Every year past, I've had this huge list of things that I've wanted. That's where I spent a bulk of my money on it. This year, it's not really my priority. I have a lot of supplies that I want to use. I'm pretty happy with the stash that I have. There are still a few things that I want, but it's really like, you know what? I should be happy with what I have. I have more than enough to last me lifetimes in creating. I should be happy with what I have. So, and I'm, you know, trying to get rid of things still. I'm still in that, you know, purging mode. So, uh, the amount coming in has definitely been less than what's going out because when I moved here, I donated four or five totes of supplies and I've got three more bags right now that are going to be donated. So I'm really happy that more is going out. Um, let's see. Am I journaling more or less with Gemini? I am journaling less. I am way tired and usually my free moments are spent doing, you know, tidying, making sure I eat, making sure I pump, Gemma's eating, making sure she's okay. And overall, you know, with a new baby, family always wants to come visit. We're doing things with family now, so generally less. And uh, when I do get a free moment, it's usually just a quick scribble here or there. I don't have dedicated time anymore. So when you see me post that on Instagram, it's usually like I'm there for five or 10 minutes. I'm not there for very long um, at the kitchen table journaling or at my craft table. Um, am I ready for a desk tour? I feel like that might be a separate video because my space is not finished. It's a complete mess right now. Um, my setup for 2019 Wallflower-ish asks about that. I did do my 2019 video uh, lineup or planner and journal lineup, so I will post that down below. Justice. Uh, asks, have I noticed a difference in the amount of journaling throughout pregnancy and motherhood? Yes. When I became pregnant, I was incredibly drained of energy, which is why I went on my little social media hiatus. A lot of my time was just spent on focusing on my health, getting sleep, moving into this house, starting a new job. I had a lot going on. Now that I'm a new mama, I am, as I mentioned, just tired. So... Five minutes here, five minutes there, really not a lot of dedicated time. I hope that changes in the future. I'm sure it will, just right now as in, you know, having a newborn uh, less time. Stationary changes during my hiatus, tastes, views, usage, yes. I go through stages with materials and uh, stationary in general. Sometimes it's all washy, sometimes it's die cuts and collaging, sometimes it's sketching and painting. Right now it's all stickers. I subscribe to the Sticky Club, which I am going to be skipping the next few months after this next month, but I'm really into stickers right now. They're easy. I can just throw in sheets of it because they're portable. They're easy to just keep in my traveler's notebook. So whenever I get a moment, I can just slap some decorations onto my page without having to worry about, you know, decorating. I can carry a lot of different types of stickers, so different styles for different moods and different pages in one traveler's notebook folder. So it gives me a lot of options and a lot of portability. And I am just really enjoying the ease of stickers. I'm really enjoying the subscriptions. So obviously I wanna utilize the stickers that I have. So that's the biggest thing that I'm really into right now. Once in a while, I'll throw in washi, but not really doing too much of that. I'm not really sketching or drawing at the moment. I am not doing too much with, well, what else did I say? Stamping. Once in a while, I'll just throw a stamp on a page. I am doing collaging because I am currently going through my stash of papers and I want to use a lot of things up. So once in a while, I'll just kind of 
throw in papers, ripped up stuff and images that I've collected that I want to use and keep everything else. I've just added to the donate pile that I didn't want to keep. So that's, that's the update on that so far. Am I keeping a baby book? Yes, that is part of my 2019 lineup linked down below. And what am I choosing to document in the baby book? Um, I feel like that needs to be a dedicated video in case you guys are wondering about ideas to keep. But to briefly tell you, I am writing down major doctor appointment uh, updates like how much she weighs, anything the doctor has mentioned that has changed that I need to do. Obviously, lots of photos that I'm taking of her. Whenever she meets a new family member, I'll journal about that. Her growth, general little things like, oh, she smiled today, or I've noticed that she's drinking a lot more, or you know, she's reacting to, you know, this toy, stuff like that. Um, am I planning on getting Baby Bear into stationery when she is old enough? In case you're wondering, um, I always referred to my daughter as Baby Bear before it re-revealed her name on Instagram. Yes. Hell yes. I really hope she gets into stationery. I really hope she gets into journaling because it is my dream to have mother-daughter journaling sessions. Like we'll go to a cafe, just sit down for an hour, enjoy our drinks, and uh, journal. I really hope she gets creative with her hands and enjoys it. If she doesn't get into it, that'll be fine too. I'll be a little disappointed, but it's my dream that she does get into it. And I am currently, I have been for a while keeping a vintage cigar box and I've kind of thrown in a few things of stationery in there. So by the time she inherits it, if she's into stationery, it's like vintage stationery. So hold on. Okay, sorry. When you're nursing, you just get so parched. <laughs> um, Life on Paper asks, how many journals have I completed in 2018? I've actually not kept count. Ever since I moved back into this house, I've just, that closet right there, I've just, I put in a bookshelf so I can have my journals out and not have them in boxes anymore. But I have not put them in order. I've not done anything with them. So I actually don't know. I am pretty sure it's less than 2017. So I will get back to you on that when I do my 2018 recap. Hopefully I'll be able to do that sometime this year. <laughs> and am I, uh, oh wait, sorry. Um, I'm just kind of jumping all over this page. Uh, do I plan to make any changes? Do I plan to change anything in 2019? Um... I don't know if that means journaling wise. It's definitely simplified so far because I have less time. I'm sure it'll change when I do get more moments to myself, but at the moment it's just less time for journaling. So not really any changes. Jenny asks, did I enjoy my Sticky Club advent calendar? Yes, I very much did so. I got the limited edition advent sticker uh, calendar folder that they created and it was a sticker sheet a day up until Christmas Day and I loved it. I thought that was a really fun thing to do. I've never really done advent calendars like ones that are pre-done by like a company. Uh, we've had like advent calendars for home for like when you put in chocolates or something. So that was my first one and I thoroughly enjoyed it just because I'm on a sticker kick as well so I'm just really into using them, which goes into our next question. Have I used any in my journal? Yes, I have. I took them all out of the little folder because it came in a craft folder. And I've kept them, I keep them in a folder like this. This is from Sticky Kit, which is another subscription, but they also have a shop. 
and it has these clear pages that you can just stick your sticker sheets to. So I've taken all of them and put them into one of these so that way I can see what I have and not have them hidden away. And then I've slipped a lot of them into my traveler's notebook as well. So, um, has my journal changed in the new year? Yes, it has. Um, I'm pretty sure I've answered that at the beginning of this video. I can't remember. <laughs> yes, it's simplified. I'm describing moments to journal when I can. And what stationery do I use for pen pals? I have not purchased stationery for pen pals in the past few years, honestly. The only thing I have purchased new are just a few postcards here and there from my travels. I am basically using up a lot of like letter sets that I have. I've, um, if you followed me on Instagram, I sent out a thing about, you know, hey, I've gathered a lot of postcards from my travels. If you want one from me, please, you know, DM me your address and I'll send one to you. I did that as a way to kind of get rid of a lot of postcards because I was, I just had a big stack of them. I've gotten a few uh, stationary sets as gifts, so I've used those. I haven't done a lot of pen palling. I just have a couple main ones that I write, so um, that's kind of it. But I usually get a, a few sets. I got a few sets from like Daiso, but a lot of mine are older sets that I've had for a while that I just I'm trying to use up, so. Uh, 518 blog asks, what's my transition to motherhood and how's it going? I feel like that needs to be addressed in a separate video. If you guys are interested, you guys can watch it. Otherwise, you don't have to. But I feel like I want to put it out there only because I felt very alone in my situation because I couldn't find anything online. Everything was very much just medical articles by the Diabetic Society or the Diabetic.org whatever site. Now, this, so what, okay, uh, to brief you on it, when I became pregnant, my diabetes turned into something where I had to actually take insulin for it to help me keep my blood sugars low and um, balanced. And it wasn't just gestational diabetes. I was pre-diabetic before I was pregnant, and so that led me into having to take insulin and I'm still having to make sure that I keep my blood sugars more balanced although I feel like my diet's a little bit freer than it was when I was pregnant because it was very strict when I was pregnant and I was constantly online trying to search for resources trying to find YouTube everything was geared toward just gestational diabetes where it was just a temporary thing for a lot of people, it was just, you know, oh, it's pregnancy, so it'll just go away after. For me, that's not the case. I was pre-diabetic, but I was able to control my diabetes through diet and exercise, even though I did have, you know, carbs and dessert once in a while. And then for pregnancy, I had to have a very strict diet. And then right now, it's a little bit freer, but... I'm still having to deal with the effects of being pre-diabetic. And so I feel like I need to, not I need to, but I want to share that story just in case somebody is going through the same thing because uh, health is such a healthy, like not healthy thing. It's like a scary thing. It can be, you're going through a lot of body changes. And then when you have to deal with something that's very stressful, it does make you feel very alone. And it just got really, really, um, it just got stressful, you know, because I was going through a lot and yeah, that, I feel like that just deserves its own video. Um, somebody does ask me about my birth story too, so I feel like I can just kind of put that all in one. Um, yeah, pregnancy, yeah, dealt with a lot, which contributed to my wanting to take my social media hiatus. Uh, D Aurora 35 asks, do I still have my bunnies? Yes, I do. They are going on, see their age is a little hard to tell. They're going on about eight years old now. 
they're senior bunnies in bunny years. They're they're pretty dang old. Um, they transitioned very well back uh, home. In case you're wondering, I moved from Wisconsin to Washington and then Washington back to Wisconsin. So uh, they were not very stressed out. I think by the time we drove across country back, they were, I think, stressed out for like 15 minutes. And then after that, they were kind of like, okay, really another road trip, mom? They dealt with it very, very nicely. They were not really stressed out at all during the road trip. They were, however, rather stressed out when we moved into this house because the previous owners had three long-haired cats and they, the house smelled like it had three long-haired cats. It also smelled like a lot of Febreze because that's what they used to clean this house. So it was very, very smelly in this house. The bunnies are extremely sensitive to that. So it took them a good two months for them to finally feel like themselves and act like themselves. They are now doing very well. They have their own, pretty much own playroom. We are very fortunate enough to have moved into a house that has two living rooms. So there's the family room with the fireplace that everybody hangs out in. And then we have our front room, which I call the drawing room because that's just gonna be the one where most people tend to have like the fancy furniture that nobody goes into. We plan on entertaining, so that I feel like is gonna be the room for that. But as of right now, it's pretty much empty of furniture, so they have the run of that room. They have their pens, and then they have their huge gated area where they are free to just roam around. They keep their little boxes off to the side so they can hide away in that. And they've got their little corner of blankets and stuffed friends. So they are very happy with all the space. And I'm very, very happy that the second trip across country didn't um, affect them too much because that was a big concern for us when we first did the road trip. They were kind of out of it for the out of it for the first day and they didn't feel the same until well into a month after we settled into our apartment in Washington. Sorry my throat's really dry so my voice is cracking. Uh, let's see, Brittany asks how has journaling been an important part of mental health, memory keeping, and identity retention during this amazing life change. It has been so incredible. I can't say enough good things about journaling in general. For me, it has been my coping mechanism, my grounding constant for when I had anxiety and depression when I was trying to cope with that. It was my go-to safety net. It was the one place that I could go to to be completely and truly authentic and honest. Some place I can rant, just let out all my thoughts without fear of judgment, without fear of feeling repetitive. I was repetitive in my journals, but I didn't feel judged by it. There's only so much that you can do to talk to, whether it's a friend, a family member, your significant other, or if you are able to see it, uh, a counselor or somebody professional about that. In the end, for me, sometimes it just felt like I was repeating myself and in my journal, I was able to just go to town. And then when I became pregnant, when I was moving, when I quit jobs, when I started jobs, it was my constant. I was able to just work out thoughts, work out anything in my head I could just put in there. And I love journaling for that. I love that it can be a place to be creative, but it's also a place that I can just be myself, my true authentic self. And it's been something that I can use to develop and to learn and to improve. 
And so I just can't, I can't even put into words how it's helped. And I hope that addresses the how part of that question, because a lot of people do ask me that's, I think the number one question I get, aside from stationary minimalism, this is the number one question, how do I use my journal and what do I journal about? Because I get a lot of comments about, oh, I just don't feel like my life is interesting enough or um, I feel like I'm just repeating myself a lot. Um, I don't want to put a lot of the bad things in it. I just want to put the good things. Journaling, I feel like in social media, and I want to address this now, journaling in social media has become this place much like a lot of in influencers accounts where you feel like you you have to compare yourself because on Instagram, in that one photo, their life looks perfect. Same with journaling. People post their beautiful bullet journal spreads, their beautiful, aesthetically pleasing, very balanced, very color coordinated, and very uh, neat handwriting pages. And that's all fine and dandy. Some people just are very perfectionist and very talented in that way, and that's cool. But I feel like a lot of other people, a good amount of those, also have pages where they just you know look like regular people's journals it's not perfect it's not balanced it's not you know perfectly color coordinated it's just them writing things down if that's the way they journal and a lot of people tend to compare that compare themselves to that and for mental health and creativity I don't think that's a good thing because you get it into your head that I can't put the good, like the bad things into my journal. No, your journal is your space. It's your own private space. Now, if you choose to share it on social media, that's, you know, your thing. But most of us aren't. So you shouldn't feel judged. You shouldn't feel like you have to curate it so much that it has to look perfect. You know, you're just journaling for yourself. You're just journaling as a way to get thoughts down and get ideas down and images. Does it have to be perfect? Does it have to be completely straight lines and, you know, perfect handwriting? I guess you'd have to just really address those questions and why you feel like it has to be that if that's the way you want your pages to be. So in tying that back to how has journaling been an important part of your mental health, memory keeping, and identity retention during this amazing change in your life, I've journaled honestly and without fear throughout the past like few years of all these life changes of constantly moving moving to a new state to a place that I didn't know anybody in to being an introvert trying to introduce myself and make friends in that environment to having quit a job started two new jobs um, well, quit two jobs and started two new jobs and having become pregnant, dealing with my diabetes, health issues, all of that. You just have to look at your life and realize that your life is yours. You find, you know, simple things that happen in your life that you could journal about all the time. And it's doesn't have to be like, I went to a party and these celebrities were there. Nobody has that life. Only like, 1% of this population has cool things that happen to them all the time. Most of us have just very ordinary things that happen. And I hope that people focus on the little things and focus on just journaling for you and whatever comes to your head, whatever you feel like journaling, because that in the end is what journaling is all about. I kind of went on this like nonsensical rant slash like babbling about that and I I hope that even makes sense to you all I'm just like talking now but that because that's a really big question that's a really good question and I hope that I can be an example for you um and giving you ideas about like how I journal during all those like big moments and um how it's helped me so 
<laughs> yeah, I hope that nonsensicalness made made sense in some way. Otherwise, you know what? Take 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 it for what it is. Um, so I think that's it. Thank you so much for listening to me ramble. I hope it's not too terribly a long video, but I appreciate that uh, you all had some interesting questions for me to answer, and I hope you enjoyed it. If you've made it to the end, thank you. And I just want to say you guys are amazing. You guys are such a great community. You have been nothing but kindness to me and sending me positive messages. I just, I so appreciate you and I love you and just thank you so much for supporting me and my channel. So I hope you are doing well. I hope you are doing well in your journals and enjoying them. And I will see you in my next video. Bye.